Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a lithium iron phosphate battery from WattCycle. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Okay, when I received the box, it was in perfect shape, so that's always a good start. And we have a box in a box. Okay, let's see what's in here. Okay, right on top, we have a baggie with uh, our post bolts, which is a set of four and a couple of post covers for protection. And uh, what I like, I like to see companies that give you uh, an extra set. Uh, that makes it just so you don't have to worry about ever losing one. I mean, in a home environment, I, I don't plan on ever losing any, but if you're in an RV and for some reason it gets dropped and kicked out of the, into the sand or wherever you're at, it's always nice to have an extra set. So thank you for, for putting an extra set in, in the box. All right, we also have, it looks like our uh, Watt Cycle uh, user manual. And then we have a good sized piece of styrofoam. All right, and then the battery. Um, the packaging, even though it was double boxed, I wish there was uh, more styrofoam on the sides. There was only this bottom piece and this top piece. And I feel that's not that's not quite enough. I mean, I feel like there should be some sort of styrofoam protection on the sides. Even though the styrofoam does make it so it doesn't really move, uh, just that added protection is always nice. Okay, and here is what you get when you buy a watt cycle, 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. You see that you have your two terminals uh, with covers and like I showed you before, uh, the bolts, they are M8 bolts, so that's a good, nice standard to have. And it does come with like these nylon carrying straps, which makes it pretty easy to actually lift this battery up. Okay, a little bit about the physical dimensions of this battery. Uh, we're looking at, for the 200 amp variety, we are looking at a little, a little tiny bit over 19 inches in length. Uh, we're also looking at 9.45 inches in height, and then the depth of this is 6.7 inches. And the weight is right at 45 pounds. All right, some other things that I found out about it is that these uh, straps, you can take them off, which is nice. Uh, if you want to keep them on, they just kind of go into place, and then they snap in right there, and it makes it so it's nice and strong. So you can easily take these off without cutting them so you can reuse them. Um, and then also the, uh, the terminals, they're recessed uh, down from the top of the case. Okay, let's see what the voltage of this battery is right out of the box. And the voltage is exactly 13.18, which is perfect for how you wanna receive your battery. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and charge this battery up to 100% which is uh, a voltage of 14.6, uh, give or take 0.2 volts. So in between 14.4 and 14.8 is where your 100% mark is going to be. Uh, when it comes to actually charging this thing uh, via like a solar charge controller or something like that, you would want to set it so if you wanted a very full battery, it would be 14.6, and then you would want to put that float down to about 13.8 volts because that's where you want to keep your battery. Uh, you don't want to keep it at that very high state of charge. You want to let it reduce down. And seriously, 13.8 volts, you're still looking at like 97, 98% of your total capacity uh, when you lower down and float at that 13.8 volts. All right, and I noticed that when I was screwing on these, uh, these post bolts, uh, these post bolts that are supplied with the battery are uh, they're three quarter inch. Uh, in length, which is nice because that, that little bit, because sometimes you get half inch bolts, and these three quarter inch ones, you're able to put multiple conductors on this battery if you need to, uh, with that little quarter inch extra of, of bolt. So um, again, supplying it with uh, you know M8 bolts and three quarter inch, that's exactly what you want as a standard. 
Okay, I've got this battery charging. I'm charging it with a 30 amp charger. Since this is a 200 amp hour uh, battery and it has a 200 amp BMS inside, the recommended charge rate is actually 40 amps or a 0.2C charge rate. I don't have a 40 amp charger, uh, so I'm just gonna charge it with my 30 amp charger. And I will be back in a couple hours when this reaches 14.6, so we can do a capacity test to make sure that we're getting a full 200 amp hours out of this battery. All right, well, this watt cycle battery is fully charged, so we're gonna go ahead and do a capacity test. Let me show you what I got hooked up right now. Okay, I have a shunt that's going to this LNX battery monitor right here. And this battery monitor needs to know what 100% is and it goes down. So I don't wanna set it to 200 because it won't go below zero. And I wanna know what the amp hours are for this battery. So this battery test is gonna go from 300 to 100 on this, on this display. And anything under 100 is going to be over what the uh, capacity says on this battery. So anything under 100 on this monitor is going to be over 200 amps on this battery. I hope that makes sense. But the range is going to be from 300 to 100 on here, and anything under 100 is going to be additional capacity of the battery. So let's go ahead and start it. Turn on my inverter, and you can see the monitor is already starting to go down just because of the power being consumed by the inverter. And I'm going to uh, run this 500 watt heater. Okay, that's on. And our amp draw. Looks like right around 40, 46 amps. It's gonna drop back down to probably around 40 though. All right. I would say that is perfect. That is a perfect 0.2C uh, discharge rate. So we're gonna come back in about five hours when this should be completely depleted. Okay, well, it's been about six hours, so I went ahead and came back downstairs and let's see what the capacity of this battery is. Okay, and it reads 94.4 amp hours. So if we reduce from 100, that gives us another 5.6 amp hours. So that means that this battery's capacity is 205.6 amp hours. So it does exceed uh, what it's rated for and that is a good thing so I'm gonna go ahead and charge this battery back up and then we're gonna go ahead and do some max amperage tests to make sure uh, it can power the loads that we want it to okay now that we have um, charged this battery uh, it's over here hidden now you can't even see it because of the next test but we charged that battery all the way up to 100% so now we're gonna do a stress test and that really means trying to push about 200 amps or 100% of the capability of the BMS, uh, you know, for like five, five, 10 minutes, something like that. We're going to do that. And then, um, but you know what? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to do that for like five minutes. And then we're going to do a stress test where we're going to try to push it over 300 amps possibly just to see because it's supposed to have uh, over amperage protection. And I feel like if you press it over 300 amps for a while, it should turn off. So let's go ahead and do a 200 amp test and go from there. Okay, and here's what I'm gonna use to test this battery right here. Uh, I'm gonna be charging my Blue Eddy EB3A on turbo. So that's gonna be like four to 500 watts going into that. Um, I also have a 1500 watt heater that's gonna be going on full blast at one point. I also have two cups of water right here that I'm gonna to try to boil with my new wave induction cooktop, and then my little tiny 500 watt space heater. So all of this, I'm gonna to try to power at the same time using this, uh, this MX Moon Free 5000 watt inverter. And I've got multiple cables wired up, so everything should be good on that end. And I also have an amp meter right here, an amp clamp, and we'll be monitoring the display of this inverter as well to probably look at wattage. Okay, so first let's just go ahead and turn on the two heaters, and that'll give us around 2,000 watts of electricity. Turn on the inverter. 
turn on this heater on high and this 500 watt heater. All right, now that those are running, we are powering 176 amps right now. And it'll probably go down as these heat up. So let's go ahead and start this cooktop on uh, wattage. I wanna have 600 watts. So let's go ahead and start that on medium. All right, let's see what our wattage is now, or our amperage. Uh, the amperage is 235. That's a bit high for what I want. So let's go ahead and put it, uh, let's put this on, uh, put this on low. Okay, I've got it so it's around 188 amps now. So let's just go ahead and stick with that and press start. We're gonna let this run for five minutes Actually, let's pump this up to 900 watts. There we go. So we're gonna do 205 amps for five minutes. All right, well, it's been five minutes. It's actually five minutes and 10 seconds. And this has been, uh, this has been pulling 206 amps this whole time and nothing is warm. This battery has done this 200 amp test with no problem whatsoever. So let's go ahead and turn everything on high just to see if something turns off. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, this heater is already on high. So let's go ahead and plug in the Blue Eddy. It's uh, set to charge at turbo. Okay, so that's cranking up. It's starting to charge at, uh, should be right around 400 watts. There we go, 400. So that pushed our amperage up to 230, 253 amps. Um, let's see, this water is boiling. This heater isn't even on. So let's go ahead and just turn that on. That's another 500 watts right there. Okay, so now that heater's on. That's boiling at 900 watts. This is a 1500 watt heater. My Blue Eddy is uh, charging at 430 watts. And so we are pulling 309 amps right now, 308. And all of this is running still. Yeah, and I was concerned for a second because I thought I saw smoke, but it's actually steam from my, uh, my induction cooktop. So no big deal. And look, it's already been, it's been seven minutes. Cabling is getting a tiny bit warm, but 311 amps now is what we're doing. Let's go ahead and turn this all the way up. and on high and now our amperage is at 353 amps and our uh, inverter our inverter reads that we are using 3,730 watts of electricity right now. My battery is down to 11.7, so it is pushing it to the limit. And it's been eight minutes now. So I don't, I mean, I feel like this battery should be shutting off. It's kind of worrisome. I mean, we got some boiling water. We got a 500 watt heater. I mean, we have a total of 3,700 watts of electricity, which is 355 amps for a 12 volt system. But the case of the battery is nice and cool. There's no hot spots at all. Take it, take it as you will. But yeah, I've been pulling 350 amps through this battery for the past couple minutes. And um, it's still doing it. Yep, 3730 watts. Our battery is at 11.8 five volts so I think uh, I think this battery can definitely power it but boy um, I don't see really any over amperage protection going on here okay let's turn this stuff off okay now that we know that it can handle 200 amps with 
no problem. And it can actually handle 350 amps for several minutes, which again, it's nice the power is there, but you know, at what point does it stop? Uh, I mean, I feel like the BMS should shut off before the wires go kaboom. So um, I feel like it can handle 200 amps that passed, but the over amperage protection, I don't feel safe about that. So over amperage protection, I, in my book, that didn't pass. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna see if the uh, cold temperature charging protection works because this battery claims it comes with cold temperature charging protection. Now, you know that I don't like tearing apart my batteries. I like to keep them intact. So, the only way that I can do cold temperature charging protection is by actually throwing it in a deep freezer for, I don't know, at least 24 hours. So let's go do that. Okay, uh, the time is now 1.34 p.m. Central Standard Time. I am gonna let this thing sit in this freezer, which sits right at zero, uh, until, um, let's just say, five o'clock tomorrow night. So that will be 20, what, 29 hours? So in about 29 hours, we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and we're gonna try to charge it to see what happens. If it charges, then I'm gonna give it a second chance because maybe after that big fat 350 amp test, um, it's still warm inside. I don't know. So if it still tries to charge, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in for another 24 hours just to make sure that it's frozen solid and then we'll charge it then. So I'll see you tomorrow at five o'clock. Okay, well, it is now about uh, 10 till 6 p.m., so it's been almost 30 hours since this battery's been in this uh, freezing chest. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out, and we'll go ahead and charge it, and it shouldn't. It should not charge at all, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, and I've got the charger set on three amps, so if it does start to charge, uh, Hopefully it doesn't damage the battery. Okay. Here goes nothing. And just like that, off. That is exactly what you want to see. When you have a frozen battery like this and it says that it has low temp charging protection, that means that when you connect a charger to it and it's too cold, it will act like the battery's not even there and it will not charge. So, perfect. Okay, so what did I think of the 200 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery from WattCycle? Well, it did everything that it said it would do. Um, it gave us a constant 200 amps. Um, the capacity was right around 205 to 206 amp hours, which is perfect. You always want to have the capacity plus a little bit more. It's nice. Um, it does have cold temperature charging protection, as I just showed. Uh, the only downside is that um, I feel like the overcurrent protection really wasn't there. Uh, we powered this thing at 350 amps for several minutes. Um, and it didn't give up the ghost. It, I, I feel like it should have shut down. Um, so it kind of makes me wonder if that feature is really up to par. But besides that, it did exactly what it's supposed to do. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, if you want to look more into this battery from WattCycle, um, I'll have a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.